Hello, making some tooling today. Uh, I have a couple upcoming projects and I thought kind of a low key Saturday would be a good time to just get all that out of the way. Um, first tooling project is we have two of these beautiful little Herman Schmidt vices that we need to palletize so they can jump from various machine to machine with uh, the, the work they're holding. So we're gonna use a standard Aroa ITS 72 pallet that we've machined a locating pattern in. Uh, and then we're going to grind it up and put in some grind reliefs. Uh, and the grinding will be done in such a way that the slot is inherently centralized over the zero point of the pallet. So I thought that would make a nice compelling short video, but also give me opportunity to test out making a video with a microphone. Uh, recently, some people chipped in some money to get me a new microphone, and I really appreciate that. Um, that's definitely an area I'm not great at uh, in this whole YouTube video thing. So we'll see if I can uh, up the value of these videos a little. So thank you for watching. Just getting the pallet milled up. Uh, I had this little insert mill in the magazine, so I just used it. I don't like high-speed toolpaths when the slot width is really wide relative to its depth. It feels like you're just using the bottom of the end mill a lot. Uh, I wanted to toss this clip in for somebody I've been talking with. He's setting up a new mill, and I, I was trying to express to him there, there's a lot of value in having like a standard tool library. So even if the tool I need isn't in the magazine, I could just have the machine wait for me to hand load a pre-set up tool that's already in my library. So I, I don't often keep a uh, tap drill for four millimeter threads in the machine, but when I need one, the machine just stops and waits for me to hand load it. And once it's loaded, I hit cycle start and uh, the tool will come down. I'll confirm the distance to go and if it looks right, I'll uh, let it rip. And uh, that's, a, that's a really nice way for, for me not to have to do much in the way of tool setting up. And uh, it really minimizes the amount of setup time in general I have for one-offs. Uh, now I'm just putting a little slot under the vise. And it connects the center slot of the vise to the thread relief or grind reliefs on the side of the slot and that's so oil can drain out of this and then this is the thread milling. I've had quite a few people ask why my thread mills start at the top and go down versus the standard bottom up approach. Uh, these run in reverse and it's so uh, you can penetrate into solid steel and uh, they're, they're really meant for hard materials but I use them on a little bit of everything. So that's the first one done. We'll swap and do the second I have to do. So this is the Clearview Swing Dresser. Uh, Herman Schmidt sold these for years. They're made by an outfit in Pennsylvania. Uh, the idea is you have a diamond, which you can set the height from the center line on. This then rotates said diamond on a plane bearing, and then it has a little magnifying lens in the back. So once you kind of get where you're going rotationally, you could then take these slide stops off, and you can slide this. So you could theoretically do like a V shape with a radius. And we're just going to be doing a full rad today with it. And uh, so we just need to set the diamond the correct distance from the center. So any clear view, if you look on the top here, they have a number. This one says 632. And that is the distance from the center of rotation to this surface. So if you want to make a 60 thou radius, you take 632 and subtract off 60, thus letting the holder sit 60 thou under the center line. And so when it swings, it'll leave a 60 thou radius. So the way we do that, we have our stack built up to the correct height. We take the, the entire holder assembly off. We set it on there. And just go down to the diamond makes contact, and then finger tight. 
So now when we put the diamond back in, it should be 60 thou under the center line. And when we go and start dressing our wheel, it'll produce a 60 thou. Whether it's just on the corner or we do a full rad is determined by if we had these stops in. So if we had the stop on, it would just put the radius on a corner, but with the stop off, we can make a full full corner or full wheel radius. Here it is doing the dressing. So I have it going a little bit past 90. I have it set to 91 degrees. Uh, and so when we walk up the side of the wheel, that vertical section is actually set in a tiny amount. And that means when you're, you're grinding with the side of the wheel, you only have like a small band of contact. You don't have that entire side of the wheel touching and rubbing and generating heat. So it's sort of like how a cup wheel operates. This is the CNC grinder dressing that exact same size. Um, you can see it goes a lot quicker over here. And you, you could even do the uh, the back taper. Programming the CNC to cut that radius is pretty simple. Um, just ask you some questions. We want the radius on the front of the wheel to be 60. Are we putting an angle? And if so, how far up the wheel are we doing? This is called like back taper. It's so you can grind just on the corner and not the fly of the wheel. Uh, so I want a half a degree back taper. We'll go up a hundred thou. Back radius, same size. Uh, same half degree. And we'll go up a hundred thou as well. Am I using a diamond or a rotary dresser? Which direction? Front to back, back to front. Uh, do I want a rough? Um, most of the time for me it's no, but I mean if you're breaking in a new wheel, you might want to turn that on. Do you want to rough just the angle, the radius? Like if you only have like a 10 thou radius, no sense roughing it. Uh, both, none. And then how much are you taking off? You can opt, if you have like a full radius wheel, to just take it off the bottom and leave none on the sides. Um, and so you're just chasing that radius up versus bringing it in as well. Uh, dress increment, finish feed rates, you can turn coolant, dust, whatever. Uh, all in all, I find it a very approachable control. I think Parker did a really nice job with it. And then it's ready to run. And here we are plunging that wheel into the corner of the pallet, and that's going to give us a really nice grind relief. And it'll also let some of the oil that accumulates in the center of the, the vise to drain out. If I had a five axis mill, I'd probably just run a ball in mill through there as we're machining it. Um, but this really doesn't take a lot, a lot of time, so it's not a huge penalty to do it on a grinder. Uh, most places I work, the grinders were kind of irresponsible. If they wanted a grind relief, they could put it in. So you got used to doing your own. Now we're just uh, using the CNC grinder to dress the or grind the top of the pallet and the the slot. Um, okay, so now we need to measure the size of the slot, and to do that, we're just going to zero our shallow diameter gauge, and there's a video on that if you want to see how to make one. Uh, we're just going to zero it to the uh, Herman Schmidt small vise, and we're going to do that by using the big vise as a uh, uh, setting standard, so to speak, by just clamping the small vise and the big vise. Um, now we can zero the gauge out, and the gauge is now set to whatever the width of the Hermann Schmidt tiny vise is. And that's what we'll be measuring. So, I'll set up, and if we measure, looks like we have about eight thou and five tenths of material. 
And so we're going to take equal amounts off of either side of the slot. So let's, let's say it's going to be seven and a half tenths coming off. So we'll grind the one side and then flip the pallet. And this reversal method that we're using here, um, that's just like a really, really good concept to have in the back of your pocket because you can get an enormous amount of precision for cheap. Uh, not just in like manufacturing, but also in calibration. And um, it, it's just a really, really clever way to go about making precise things, uh, both measurements and parts. And so by flipping it about the zero point of the pallet, that slot is inherently centered. And if you're doing like production, what you could do is you could rough with the side of the wheel towards the operator and rough both sides and then use the opposite side to finish. But uh, we don't have a lot of stock, so I'm just grinding all of the stock on one side. All right, so we took seven and a half tenths, and you'll see um, because we have like a, uh, a back tapered wheel, only the corner is really doing any machining. And uh, so it is kind of subject to wheel breakdown. So that seven and a half tenths was really only about seven tenths. And you'll see that when we measure it, we come up a little shy. So right now we're about a tenth under the width of the vise, and ideally I'd like to be about a tenth over. So we'll just take another 50 millionths, or another tenth per side, and that should put us a tenth over the vise width. And I'm just doing this manually. This machine has uh, macro programming options for slots, um, but for, for something like this, it's just as quick to do it manually. Uh, nice thing about using this to grind slots in CNC mode is it can update the, the dress of the side of the wheel. So you can rough and then just have it go over and dress the side of the wheel, and uh, you, you, you maintain really good slot widths all through your run that way. I'm also going to show just another option for how you could grind this uh, using a 45 degree wheel. Um, not my personal favorite. I'm comfortable enough side wheeling like this. This is how I generally approach slots, but a lot of people do like the 45 degree method. Okay, we should be to size. We'll give it a quick measure. And about tenth over. So that's done. Here's the 45 degree wet method. You have your part tilted and you have an angle dressed on your wheel. And what that does is it spreads the cutting instead of the corner, it spreads it across the wide width of the wheel. And here's it going together. You see we get just a really nice slip fit. All right, so that's that. Thank you for watching.